It's officially the best time of year at Epcot. Come with us to eat around the Food and Wine Festival. So, like, let's do the Yay! thing. Okay, yeah. bye. So we wanted to stop at a lot of the booths this year, but we wanted to do it a little bit differently. So we polled you all to figure out just how much you would spend per person at Food and Wine. And from that, we got about $75 per person. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Yep, we are headed to the creation shop right now to pick up some gift cards. Maybe quickly look at the merchandise and we're on our way. I gotta say, this year's ears are a choice. Can't say I'll be adding those to my collection. Unless you'll wear the matching polo. It's a lot of carbs on one piece of clothing. Straight to jail. Immediate no. I don't hate it. Do you have eyeballs? Come on, you don't like this? No. Sleeves. Straight to jail. I will say I do like this wine glass. It looks like the right size for one glass of wine, right? Yeah. Definitely. One glass, half a bottle. I do enjoy the corksicle though. $34.99. That's too much to spend to take wine to go. I'll just put a straw in a bottle. Also, if we only have $75 each, I don't think we should blow a quarter of that on one wine glass. Food brings the world together. T-shirt, coaster. See, this is, this is, the is this a magnet or a coaster? It's a, Both? It's a big magnet. It's like half your fridge. Okay. I do like the Remy Turvis. Okay. We have so many Turvises. We have a we have a Turvis cabinet, not a shelf, cabinet. Are you saying I don't need another Turvis? It will inevitably be left somewhere and not put away. Okay, who else leaves cups everywhere? I feel personally attacked that I always have at least one cup. One, 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 she says, one. It's more than one. Service. Chef Figment Magic Band, cutting board, to-go cooler. We love a spirit jersey, but more than that, we love eating, so let's get our gift cards. Also wanted to point out back again this year's Remy's Hide and Squeak. It's where Remy is hidden all over World Showcase. There's these little stickers. Find Remy in each of the countries. Put it where it belongs. Um, and when you complete it, you can get a prize at any of the Disney gift shops. So like Creations, Gateway Gifts, um, the shop at International Gateway. And this year they're little cups. And there's Tiana, Figment, Mickey, and Remy. Those are super cute. I love that there's a Tiana making beignets one. But um, this is $9.99 in discount supply. I always love doing these. It's a great activity, especially for your little as you eat and drink around the festival. Gift cards acquired, they were behind the register. I love the risk gift card because you can try and budget easier like we're doing, put a set amount on there, and then at least you know when you've run out of your money. Maybe you'll reload it. I don't know what you'll do, but at least you know how much you've spent. One phone by a 12. Just went to our first booth, Flavors from Fire. This is a returning booth and one of my returning favorites of all the festival. It's a smoked corned beef. It's got crispy potatoes, cheese curds, pickled onions, and a beer cheese fondue. Have you ever had this? No, but I desperately want to. Let's see. It's so good. I can't wait to eat it again. I'm glad they brought it back. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Can, can you stop eating for a second so we can talk about it? Right, that's part of this, okay. Um, it's amazing, again, it's a really nicely balanced dish. You've got the salty meat, the salty chip, but then a crisp bite from the chip as well. And then you have that really, really awesome beer cheese. Honestly though, through all that, it can be really rich. You do need some of that pickled onion. It will really cut through that and make it nice and refreshing as well. Mm. One of my favorites again, and it was our first stamp on Emile's Fromage Montage, which is the cheese crawl around the festival. They're doing it a little bit differently this year. There's 10 items on the list. You can get any combination of them. You could get all five of the same thing. You can get five different ones. You don't have to do it all on the same day. And then once you've done them all, you get a prize. So that counted as our first one, and I'm sure we will eat many more cheese things along the way. All the cheese. I could probably eat all 10. All the cheese. So there are some booths here that don't open until mid-August, so that means there's a return trip in our future, but you know what's great after corned beef nachos? The Fry Basket. I'm very excited for more carbs. So the Fry Basket is a new booth this year featuring delightful treats that have all been fried. Both potatoes and potato-like items, including yucca. I'm excited. So what was this in the past? This is usually the donut box. Yeah. And now it's french fries, so a major upgrade. True. 
Well, it didn't take us long. The second booth, we are eating on Disney's favorite table, the trash can. It's a tradition. Truly. So the fry flight is $7.50, but look at all the food you get. I'd say it's worth it. You have the sea salt and malt vinegar fries. If you don't get more malt vinegar, what are you doing? Next are barbecued bacon fries with a smoked aioli. We love an aioli. We love an aioli. And finally, the sweet potato casserole fries with candy pecans, toasted marshmallow cream, and caramel whiskey. I'm intrigued. I also want to point out, these are plant-based. The rest aren't. And like Alan said, they have extra malt vinegar. So you know we got some. As a vinegar expert, I am going to... I made it. Review these ones, the sea salt and vinegar. This has a... Ooh! Ooh. I am going to add more malt vinegar, an inappropriate amount of malt vinegar to those. Um, while I do that, please eat the whatever barbecue. It smells incredibly smoky. The smoked aioli. I wanted the fry first. Mm. Delicately spiced. A lot of paprika, a lot of cumin. You get, a, you get some of the traditional barbecue flavors. Not too much liquid smoke though, I think. While the aioli is definitely liquid smoke, they didn't overpower it. So if you like a smoky flavor, Ooh, I think this yeah. is the one for you. Those are great. Yeah, the barbecue ones are definitely better. Uh, what about, we're gonna both do this one? Yeah, we're gonna both try the dessert french fries. Right, I'll let you get a dip. We didn't even cheers. So falling apart. Whoa. Hey now. This is what dreams are made of. This is what dreams are made of. Yeah, big time. Yeah, that's excellent. This is my kind of dessert. You all know I don't like sickly sweet things. So this has a little bit of saltiness on the fry, natural sweetness from the potato. But then that bourbon sauce. Right? Whiskey. Woo! Wow. Honestly, if you gave me a plate of just those, I would smash them. Yeah. Amazing. Rank these one to three. Uh, one is going to be the concoction that is a semi-dessert. Okay. Two Agreed. Potatoes. Number two, barbecue. Agreed. Number three, salt and vinegar. Agreed. Just doesn't, it's not as creative as the others. No, but this is a great shareable if you're with a big group. You could all get a couple fries. I think worth the seven fifty. Yeah, big group or one me. True. I think it's nice that on the map they put the harmonious barges as if anyone could forget they're here. Also, they're not to scale. Look at that. Look at, the, look at this. That makes them seem tiny. And then you turn around and you say, oh, hello. Wung by the swanky saucy swine. Say that three times fast. Swanky saucy swine. And last year I got the pimento cheese, which returns this year. And it was fine by my Southern standards. It is a part of a meal's fromage montage. But this year couldn't resist trying the new pork shoulder lettuce wraps. So there's charred corn salsa, pickled red onion, and cilantro lime crema on lettuce wraps. Would you like one? Yeah. Well, go, go ahead. Okay. Big. Cheers. What are we going to do with you? I'm very messy. I yeah, know. Everyone knows I'm eating like Oh, a yeah. Okay, hold on. Hold on. That was delicious. It was really good. Just, to, just the right amount of acidity. The meat was tender. I like that it's not on a carb. As much as I like carbs, the lettuce wrap was something a little bit unique, right. different, lighter when you're eating all this heavy food. Exactly. I mean, we went from two carbs in a row, and that is yeah. just refreshing enough. That cilantro crema, though. Yeah, this crema is what seals the deal on that oh. one. I would definitely recommend that over the pimento cheese, which is something I never thought I'd say. Wow. I know. Honestly, this might be controversial. That might make my list. Ooh, Alan's best of the fest. Yeah, big time. Wow. Jumping in line now in Mexico. This is one of my favorite booths every year. They always have a banger taco, a tostada, a couple margaritas. I think it's time for a margarita. I agree. As well as a tostada. A beverage. It's trash can time again. Just embrace it. You know what we're talking about. If you've been to Food & Wine before, it's just part of the culture. Anyway, I love the tostadas they do at the Mexico booth. This one is barbacoa beef. It's got uh, chipotle black beans, salsa verde, Mexican crema, queso fresco, and some chives on there. And then we decided upon the blood orange charm margarita, which has got tequila, blood orange aperitif, black currant infused, infused vodka, and prosecco served on the rocks uh, with a sweet dried chili salt rim. So lots of flavors going on. The margarita's disappearing. And we have a smile of approval. I 
thought, okay, you, I thought we were cheers. What? Mm. Mexico. Mexico. It, Mexican is my favorite kind of food. I love the spice. I love the flavor profile. That salsa verde is excellent. That beef was really juicy and tender. Love the crispiness from the corn tostada. That that might make Molly's best of the fest. Yet again, my only complaint, I wish there was more queso fresco. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think the meat is really creamy. Kind of fall off the... I, I feel like I didn't have to chew, which is nice. Yeah. Ooh, also, this is fabulous. Right? You can really taste the Prosecco, which is one of my favorite beverages. A little bubble in there, pop. It's not too sweet, but it's definitely on the sweeter side, but I could drink it. What I will say about Mexico, though, is it tends to be an expensive booth. This drink was $12.50, um, which it's not a full-size beverage. You could get a full-size margarita at Chosen a Margarita or La Cava del Tequila for just a few dollars more. Typically, I don't love drinking at the booze as much as I love drinking at the full-time establishments here because it's going to be better bang for your buck. So if, unless there's something you really, really want to try, you're better off getting a drink at the permanent locations. That said, that's delicious, and I, I would like it back. No, I know. So our next booth is China, but I'd like to take a moment as we walk through Norway to pour one out for Poland. Yeah, they used to have Poland around here and it had pierogies and they were so good. Who doesn't want a pierogi on a hot Florida day? I don't know. I do. I sure do too. I miss I miss the Poland booth. <sighs> Here's to Poland. All that said, next up is China. Interestingly enough, throughout the rest of the year when you're just eating the food from the China Pavilion, it's aggressively mid. But the booth, very tasty. Save the drinks, which I think are just sugar cubes. It's worth noting that we are on a budget and the pan fried chicken dumplings are significantly cheaper. Five dollars. So from the China Pavilion, we have gotten the chicken pan fried dumplings. They've had dumplings in the past, but this is apparently a new sauce. So looking forward to trying that. Uh, it is a sweet and spicy sauce topped with some scallions and some sesame seeds. I'm excited to dig in. I do think I miss the old sauce. It's a little dry. The old sauce was more like um, like that dark sauce that you get with dumplings when you order it from Chinese restaurants. Right. Like an eel sauce? Yeah. These are fine. They're okay. I'm I do miss the sauce. I agree. I'm a little bummed because I missed the sauce. They have the noodles again this year, but it's pork instead of shrimp. For many, many years, they had a spicy shrimp noodle dish. That was one of my favorites of the festival, and now it's pork. So... I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed. Me too, because that Flower and Garden China was one of my favorites. But I'm sad. The, the bao bun's okay too, but I'm sad because normally this is one of my favorite booths. What a waste of scallions. Ugh. I bring the sauce back. That's gonna maybe go on my worst of the best. I am genuinely sad at how disappointed I am in that. Yeah. Headed now to India, which I gotta say is one of the most beautiful food and wine booths. Looking at what we have here, ooh, we have a crispy paneer cheese, which sounds amazing, a samosa, and tikka masala. I like all of those things. I don't like mango, so I'm definitely not trying that mango drink. Which one do you think we should get? The crispy cheese, or the tikka masala, or the samosa? I just think that the crispy cheese sounds so good. Oh good, because that's the right answer. Yeah. <clears throat> Also wanted to point out as we walk up to the booth, look up at the top corner of the booth there. There's a little Remy with his garlic. If you do the Remy's hide and squeak, that's what you're gonna be looking for, a little Remy's like that. And here she is, the videographer in a natural habitat, taking video of cheese. Not just any cheese, cheese from India. It is paneer. What do we got? First, I'd like to introduce, you've heard of Food & Wine Trash Can, but have you in, enjoyed Food & Wine Light Post? Anyway, it's paneer cheese from India, so it's fried cheese with a mango curry uh, dipping sauce. I don't love mango, but I do love curry, so I'm excited. Now, wait a minute. Whoa. So right off the bat, the cheese itself, I want to know. 
It is spongy, but not in a bad way. It's not stringy like a normal cheese stick that you get like a mozzarella stick. Yeah. Also, the dipping sauce has a strong curry flavor, a little bit of heat, and then it's balanced nicely with that little bit of sweetness. So it's excellent. And whatever they actually fried the cheese in is delicately sweet, not super salty. I, I'm having trouble identifying the exact flavor, but it is just gentle enough to really sort of offset the faint saltiness of the cheese itself. Plus, it's $5 and you get five of these, which I think is a good deal. It's a steal. This is the perfect dish to introduce to a kid or a picky eater who's not used to Indian flavors or spicier flavors because it's kind of like a mozzarella stick, which is familiar, but then it has just enough twist that maybe it'll tickle their taste palate. So big fan, big, big fan. fan. Guten Past Refreshment Outpost. Remember, we're on a budget and they only have one festival dish. It's this spicy kathiri dish they had last year. It's actually very good if you're a plant-based eater. It's uh, quinoa and some slaw. It's very, very tasty, full of tons of flavor, but since we're on a budget and I've had it before, we have our eye on some other things we'd like to enjoy. Next up is Kenya, and playing into Molly's coffee obsession, we are going to get the coffee rub steak. It's got a sweet potato and corn mealy pap, which is their version of kind of like grits. Um, and then a slaw on top because Disney loves a pickled vegetable this year. Mm. That's good. That's excellent. That's very good. The steak was really tender and juicy, cooked perfectly. A little bit of that coffee flavor on the outside. There's a subtle sweetness to it, which I think is good in this instance. We came from a lot of really salty foods at the start of this, and now it's going to progress naturally to something more sweet. But, again, you said it, and I'll repeat it, those pickled vegetables. Star of the show. They're, it's another really balanced dish, and I think for the price, this one's a good one. Yeah. A lot of people tend to get that amazing ten, uh, beef tenderloin over in Canada, but I don't think you should sleep on this one if you're a steak fan. Absolutely not. Maybe my best of the fest. It's a really good steak. It's very unique, too. Okay. Back on the cheese crawl, made it to the Alps. This one debuted a few years ago, and it quickly became a fan favorite because it's where they do that raclette cheese, which is that cheese that they just, like, scrape off onto various toppings. They've got three different ones. Uh, they have a ham one. A just cheese one and then a new one that we're gonna try which has pears and figs and kind of like charcuterie accoutrement any of the three count for the fromage montage I also want to point out I'd be getting it if we weren't on a budget today because um, I want to try some new drinks but the froze here is excellent this is the warm rec 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 raclette Ooh. that's the one Swiss cheese <laughs> with Riesling poached pears, some red wine braised figs, candy pecans, honey, and a cranberry toast. I'm digging all of this. Yeah, it's like the dessert version of melty cheese. We do stand dessert cheese. Yeah. Okay. Cheese, cheers. Cheers. That's a mouthful. Mm. Okay, not to sound sacrilegious, but that is a lot happening in one dish. That's too much. And I love cheese. Also, it has sucked all the moisture out of my mouth. Yeah, the bread's too dry, and it kind of was like you took everything on a charcuterie board and put it on one crostini right. and shoved it in your mouth as opposed to like mixing and matching. I'm bummed because I was really excited about this, but it's too dry. There's too many flavors going on. It would be better if you did mix and match on it, but I think I love the warm melty cheese. I highly recommend either the ham one or the vegetarian one. If you want to do the melty cheese, I would skip this. Yeah, it's I, just not only too many flavors, there's too many textures. A lot of stuff. I'm shocked, but... Sad. Duck. It's a duck. I love it. You're just a waddling. Just a waddling guy. Molly? 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 Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something controversial. Maybe we skip the cheese at Germany. We've had so much cheese. We're well on our way for the cheese trail. We can we can skip the German cheese. But noodle grind. I, I hear you, but also what if we didn't have cheese? I've never thought of that, not having cheese. Maybe, though, a trade-off is beer. Ah, 
likes it. As previously mentioned, Germany is a mainstay. They often have a lot of the same things year over year, which is why we are going to be, as, uh, as we said, skipping the cheese and going with beer. Your boy's excited. I always spill. Don't spill. So you gotta find somewhere close for us to stand. Trash can. Guten Tag, friends. Uh, in lieu of cheese, we have beer. Specifically, the Co. The I'm going to butcher this. Why hence to finer lager? That's that not how to say it. That was bad. I thought it was good. It was really bad. And the Schofferhofer Pineapple Hefeweizen. One thing to know about this Hefeweizen, this is the made by the same company that does the grapefruit beer everybody loves so much in Germany. I don't like that grapefruit beer, and I think I'm not going to like this pineapple one either because I just looked it up to confirm. Guess the ABV on that beer. I don't know, normal, 4.85? 2.5. That's juice. Put that in a bottle for your kid. For legal reasons, don't give it to your kid. I am trying the lager, which is similar to like a Bud Light is a lager. And I am having a Kolsch, which is a distinctly German beer. Um, oh my gosh. You good? You need, a, you need a sip? Do you see all these birds flying around? I have attracted them. There's my one wily way. in the tree right there. So a Kolsch is a distinctly German beer. Very malty, very hoppy. Um, I'm looking forward to this. For the record, the lager's delicious. It's very light. It's got a little more bite than like a domestic lager. Um, I would liken it to maybe a Heineken. So it's pretty good. And the Kolsch is very smooth. A bit of a light, the best way I can describe it is caramel. Taste at the top, that quickly dissolves into something that's hoppier. Very good, very oh, yeah. smooth. I like that one more. Right, very, very good. Now, do you want to try the juice? I would like some juice to wash it down. I'm gonna have the lager to wash it down. Oh my gosh, no. Oh, that's good. Wanna try the juice? It's way too sweet. It's like, I love fruit beer. I love a fruit beer by the pool. That just tastes like pineapple. There's no beer flavor in that at all. If I was gonna get this again, I would just get a pour of the Kolsch, I think. I don't think I would do this flight again. Ugh. Alan's loving it though. You've seen Trash Can, you've seen Lamp Post, but have you seen Glass Shop Window Ledge, the newest and latest in food and wine dining fashion? We figure this is the food and wine festival. Yeah, it is. It's time to have wine. For sure. And so- Where do we get this wine, Malls? We didn't get it in France. Nope. We didn't get it in Italy. Absolutely not. We got it in Spain. Spain. Spain also is known for their wine. It is true. So I'm very excited. Um, as you can see, it's a white, a rosé, and a red. Uh, and what I think is interesting about the wine flights is the majority of them are around $6, $6.50. And it equals out to just a little less than a full glass of wine. And I feel like that's a good deal because if you were to buy a glass of wine like at a Disney restaurant, it would be at least ten dollars. Very, very gently picking it up. What a wee little glass of wine! Do you feel is. like a giant? Honestly, there have been a lot of times when I'm eating this food where it makes me feel like the Jolly Green Giant. This is one of them. Look at this. Bitty bitty. Cheers. Tiny cheers. Ting. Ting. So this is a Grenache. It is very good. Dry on the foretaste. Very dry wine, but still really refreshing on the back end. I'm trying to be a tiny bit pretentious. Oh, this, oh is this a tiny bit? You, well, yeah, because it's a tiny glass. Itty bitty twirl. Itty bitty twirl. This is a very good rosé. It's very dry rosé, not sweet at all. If there's anything better than drinking a nice crisp rosé on a hot day, I don't know what it is. I would absolutely get a full glass of this. Finally figured it out. It's blackberries. Super blackberry forward. Um, yeah, here, try that. Oh yeah, that's nice. That is nice. I'll try the rosé. I'm gonna go for the white. I'm not normally a white wine drinker. Um, I much prefer red wine or when I'm hot, a rosé. But you know what? It's food and wine, so we gotta try all the wine. Rosé all day, baby. Oh, that's actually a very good white wine. Very crisp, not too sweet. I think that's my problem with white wine. A lot of times, white wines tend to be sweeter, but that's very crisp, very apple, pear. Yeah, that's great. I liked all three of those wines quite a bit. 
Before we move on too quickly from Spain, though, I do want to point out that the charcuterie is very good. It's very dense. Um, and the paella is very good as well. These are all returning dishes from previous years. None of them have ever made my best of the fest, though. So that's why we went for the wine flight as well. Can I show you something cute? I would love that. If you look at the little town here at the mini train station, look at the little flags. Oh my god, they're celebrating food and wine. Yeah, they swap those out every festival and I just think it's such a cute little detail. We are absolutely skipping Italy. I don't know what happens in Italy, but their food in the pavilion, delicious. Via Napoli, one of the best restaurants in Disney World. But the Italy booths are always so disappointing. And we are on a budget, and our budget does not include disappointment from Italy. So I wonder who's playing tonight. Oh, I don't know. Also, fun fact, Eat to the Beat is back this year for the first time since 2019. I couldn't be more excited. Yeah. Because Boys to Men is coming back. Yes. Boys to Men and Food and Wine is one of my favorite nights of every year. I've seen them every year. They've been here since like 20. My college program, and I missed them the last few years, so I am giddy. Okay, so with all of Molly's enthusiasm, we didn't actually explain what the movie was, but it's a free concert series every year. Yes, and it's usually bands from like the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, uh, and it's free. There's three shows a night. There are also dining packages available. You can book some of them in advance at certain restaurants like Coral Reef and Beer Garden. And then there are some day of packages at Regal Eagle and Spice Road Table where you get a prefix meal and then a safe seat inside there. But I love them. 90 Degrees is coming back this year. Heck Boys yeah. to Men, once again, can't say that enough. Hanson, Joy Fatone and Friends, um, <laughs> Tiffany, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, it's Sugar Ray, it is the best. If you see a blonde girl with a beer in hand, dancing badly and screaming end of the road, the top of her lungs, no you didn't. But that's you, but that, but that, but that's, but that's you. Next up is Hops and Barley, which is in the American Pavilion, home of a delightful carrot cake and a beer flight that I desperately would like in my mouth. Here it is. This is one of my favorite desserts every year, so I had to get it again this year. It's a fresh carrot cake. They pour this creamy cream cheese icing on it to order. It's warm and gooey, and I am excited to have it again this year. And here we have the beer. The strawberry and lime wheat ale, which I'm intrigued to try because that's just a very unique combination. The Lexington Brewing and Distilling Company Kentucky Pumpkin Barrel Age. That is a, that packs a punch. That's my dream. Yeah. And then finally is a Lord Hobo Brewing Boom, so Boom, Boom Sauce. Sauce Double IPA, a Dippa. Wait, is that what double IPA means? Is that what Dippa means? I just yes, thought it that's what Dippa I means. I thought Dippa was like a fun word on the beer. No, it means double IPA. I understand now. We've learned together. All right, well, I'm obviously trying the pumpkin one first. I'll do the Dippa. Cheers. So this is a really good traditional double IPA. You can taste the second hop, the, the second sort of hopping that it went through. Really citrusy and refreshing on the back end. This is my first pumpkin beer of the 2022 season. My favorite flavor. I will try as many pumpkin beers as I can every year. I've had this one before. It definitely packs a punch. It has a higher ABV than many. Those autumnal spices, nutmeg, ginger, the pumpkin pie spice, but it still tastes like beer. So it's great. Is that the strawberry lime one? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to say something. This smell when I was a cast member, there were backstage areas that were often cleaned, and it smells like that cleaning product in this beer. kind of tastes like cleaning products. It also tastes like cleaning products. It's very light and refreshing, and on a hot day, like in the middle of the sun, I think it'd be really good. Certainly better than that pineapple, pineapple one we had, um, and I think this flight is better than the beer flight we had in Germany, too. Absolutely. Get in there. Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? I mean, I'm a fan, so I'm going to eat it. Carrot cake is basically eating vegetables. One thing that I'll say right off the bat, it is incredibly delicate and it will fall apart on your fork. Mm. Are you gonna be okay? It's so good. I don't get weird for desserts, but I'm getting weird for this carrot cake. True. It's got this very sweet cream cheese frosting, but the cake itself isn't that sweet. It's again got the ginger and the nutmeg and those autumnal flavors, so it's really balanced. A little crunch in there too, nice moist cake. This is Amali's Best of the Fest. 
for dessert. Well, we've officially made it halfway around the world. Let's keep going. We've got our budget in check. We know what we're gonna get. Let's go. Uh, you look uh, different. You look different. Huh, all right, well, anyway. Oh well. The next food and wine booth on our path is actually the funnel cake stand right here in the American Adventure. They serve funnel cakes year round, but then they usually do a specialty funnel cake for the different festivals. I normally look really forward to this. It's one of my favorite things, but unfortunately for me, it's pina colada this year, and I don't love pineapple. I do love coconut, however, but with us being on a budget, 950 is a big gamble for something we're not sure is gonna be that great. So we're skipping it this year. Truthfully, I'm still a little salty about the last one that they had that was cherry and it tasted like medicine. So I'm afraid this would be artificially super sweet too. And I'm really bitter that they haven't brought back the street corn one, which sounds wild, but it was like a sweet and savory funnel cake. And I wish they'd do more things like that instead of just really sweet things. It was really the only one worth having. Most funnel cake, I'm sorry, it's an unpopular opinion, is pretty trash. Which means the next booth we're actually gonna grab something at is here in Japan. They brought back the teriyaki chicken bun, which is always a fan favorite. And then they have some new dishes as well. One features octopus, one features salmon. They've got a few drinks. The uzu lemon drop is back. I had that last year. It was pretty good for a pre-made beverage. But truth be told, I don't actually know that much about sushi. I usually let other people order for me. So you're in charge here in Japan. Let's make it happen just ordered our salmon and as a fun fact as a helpful tip if you're using gift cards whenever you get your receipt down at the bottom it'll tell you how much is left so I have 1875 left on mine and we'll figure out how much Alan has left on his at the next stand so that we can stay within that $75 each budget in Japan we have gotten the spicy salmon donburi which is spicy salmon with some sushi rice a shiso leaf uh, some red tobiko as well as rice pearls you can see all that on top here the tobiko is actually effectively fish eggs I guess is the best way to put that but yeah I'm looking forward to eating this it looks very very tasty for those of you who are curious this is very much a raw dish it's kind of like a sushi grade ahi tuna deal except this time it's with salmon same spicy sauce which just looks to me like a spicy mayo I don't always love raw fish but I do like ahi tuna usually and the sauce looks good so mm. all right I can get with that one The sushi rice is great, very light. You can just ever so slightly taste the rice vinegar that they put in order to keep it separate. Um, the fish itself is very fresh. The spicy sauce, which is the sort of spicy mayo, is not very spicy. There's just enough of a kick to sort of remind you that it's there. And the rice pearls are a good textural sort of break up from everything else that you've got. Just very, very good. Do you think this is worth almost $9? So, if there was more food, I would say yes. I still think it's going to make my list of the best of the fest strictly because I love sushi. Um, and I, I really am surprised that the salmon is this good. Normally salmon is not my go-to sushi grade fish because I find it a little bit too fatty. But this is very well prepared. I don't think it's worth $8.50, almost $9. Uh, if the portion sizes were a bit bigger, I'd say yes. But if you do like sushi, this is worth getting because it is surprisingly good and fresh. Every now and again, the texture reminds me that it's raw fish, and I go, ooh, but flavor-wise, it is delicious. All that said, Japan is usually one of the best foods at the festival, and I would say if you've got a pickier eater, the teriyaki chicken bun is a great standby um, for those folks who want something a little more familiar. It's a great choice as well, and a little more budget-friendly at $4.75. Now we are headed to Greece to get another thing from Emile's Fromage Montage, and one of my favorites from the festival last year, very excited that it's back. That's a figment apron. Yeah, but not in the, like, you're figment. You would be figment. Yeah, it's his It's his belly area. It's his body and hands, but your face. <clears throat> that's nightmare fuel. You're not into it? No, not into I it. I think I kind of like it. Listen, I'm pretty hairy homemaker, but that's not a... There's actually a lot of figment stuff. They didn't have all of this in Creations. There's a couple deep shirts. There's a turvis. Uh-oh. Plate. So keep an eye out throughout the festival for merchandise because it doesn't seem like it's all in one place. Alan has twenty six seventy five after our purchase in Greece, so we've Looks got like the next few. Yeah, we've got about forty ish dollars. We're doing pretty well. We've had a lot of stuff. 
Here it is, the griddled cheese. So this is Greek cheese that's been griddled on the grill and then it's topped with honey and pistachios. And I'm so excited about this. It was also, again, the fourth stamp in Emile's Fromage Montage. Cheese, cheers. Cheese, cheers. Bing. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. All right. Is this the best cheese dish yet? Honestly, this is on my best with fast off the rip. That's two in a row, Me by too. the way. That is so good. The honey adds just a little bit of sweetness because the cheese is nice and nutty. And then there's literal nuts on it as well. Simple deliciousness. You know, that's my favorite kind of food. Everything at Greece looks amazing. They also have Spanakopita, which is really good. Is it any better than the Trader Joe's kind that you can put in your air fryer? No, but still delicious. And they have a lamb gyro. Am I saying that right? Thank you. Um, which looks like it's a pretty big serving with the the flatbread and the tzatziki sauce and the lamb. I will definitely be getting that on another trip to Epcot. So if there's other food you want to see us eat, nah, I don't feel. We're going to do that in future videos, but mm, it's so good. So good. Yeah. We are going to skip Morocco, which has set up their festival booth in Tangerine Cafe. Um, but the reason we're skipping it is they've been doing these kebabs for literally the last like four festivals. They're very good. They're full of flavor. They're a great price point. Uh, and they do have some other items. They've got a pistachio cake that they've had before. They've had the stone baked Moroccan bread before. But the thing is, a lot of this is food from the restaurant when it was a full quick service restaurant. So it doesn't feel as special or unique to the festival as some of the other dishes. So we're gonna scoot past Morocco. Although, if you wanna eat Morocco, I highly recommend Spice Road Table because they have some amazing cuisine. Spice Road Table is tapas. And this is, again, one of the places that you can do the walk-up dining package to get the reserved seats for the Eat to the Beat concert. It's $45 per adult. You get two small plates, a non-alcoholic beverage, and a dessert, and then you get reserved seating at the shows. It's a great way, if there's an artist you really want to see, to lock in a good seat, because when there are popular artists here, people wait in line for hours and hours to get a seat. So it's going to sell out quick, because, again, it's first come, first serve. But I would have predict Boys and Men and Hanson are going to be some of the busiest, but you may just see me eating here Boys to Midnight, maybe I'll do a review then, but I'm very excited for Boys to Men, if you couldn't tell. Very much like Morocco, we are going to be skipping Belgium, and it's not because Belgium's bad, it's actually quite tasty, but it's just because the menu hasn't changed in years. So tasty stuff, I, I fully recommend stopping by and picking up a waffle, but we're just going to skip this one because it, uh, it's not new or unique. You know what we're not going to skip though? What? Brazil. Uh, no, cheese bread. Yeah, cheese bread. Pau de queijo. Need it. We need it for the fromage montage. Yeah, definitely. That's why I want it. Not just because it's delightful. Brazil also has a pork belly that has a Brazil nut pesto, so if that is of any interest to you, feel free to go ahead and nab that. Uh, but it's one of the only types of pesto that I can eat because it doesn't have pine nuts in it, and I am deathly allergic to those. Here it is, the Pau de Queijo. This is one of my favorites every year. It's Brazilian cheese bread, um, and it's actually made with tapioca starch, so it's gluten-free. So if you're a gluten-free eater, you can enjoy this. It's super duper cheesy, and it was the final stamp in our fromage montage. So we get to go get a prize soon. Is the prize more cheese? Yeah. Heck yeah. Actually, I don't know what the, I don't actually know what the prize is. Last year it was a cheesecake, so oh, we'll find out. Find out. Cheers. Cheese cheers. You can't go wrong. Honestly. It's cheesy. Look how cheesy it is. Look at that. I like that it's easily shareable. It's a good price point. It's a nice mild cheese, so pretty much anyone that likes cheese should enjoy. And the texture is inoffensive. It's chewy, but not going to be sort of mushy. It's just very... Oh, I thought it's such a solid, scary, mm. snackable item. Mm -hmm. I could eat a hundred of these, probably. Easy. Unsurprising. France is the longest line by far we've encountered. This is always one of the fan favorites, myself included. I'm the fan. But if France is on your food and wine list, you may want to consider coming here first, right when the booths open up at 11. You know what we haven't had enough of today? What? Cheese. Well, good. Because France coming in strong with a three cheese beignet. It's like a warm, doughy deliciousness with cheese on top and a three cheese sauce shoved in the middle. This is one of my favorites last year, but it was a controversial pick. Some people hated this. Not me though. Not me. Look at this. Look at that. Dear Lord. It's like a bechamel sauce shoved in, shoved in a pastry. How can you not want to eat that? Did you realize it's like 106 with humidity? Yeah. Okay, as long as you know. Cheers.
I will say, it is a really interesting, but good, and when I say interesting, I mean good, combo of slightly sweet from the beignet, that really nice doughiness, and the bechamel isn't necessarily salty, but it is there to break up a lot of that sweetness in a way that is, I mean, it's just enough. And then you have like the crispy cheese on top that's been melted, but it has a little crunch to add another texture. For some people, the sweet dough and cheese doesn't work for me. What could be better? Also, please don't at me in the comments and say, how can I like beignets when I don't like donuts? They're different. It's fine. Let me live my logic. We did really want to try the beef at France, but also we're on a budget. In fact, the budget you all helped provide us. So we went with the cheesy beignet and I have no regrets. I would like to try that beef as well. It's got a Cabernet sauce and mashed potatoes with it. So we could, you know, just make more food and wine content later to eat more things. So you're telling me we can come back and eat more food? Yeah. All right, that sounds like a plan. The festival lasts like half the year this year. We got time. Let's be real. Epcot has a festival all the time. Pretty much. We are crossing the bridge to our final booze. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. I could eat more cheese. You could? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, sure. Look at your little outfit. Girl, you're always working it. Yes. <laughs> Can we take a picture? All right, there we go. <laughs> Next up would be Ireland. However, on a day like today when it is 106 with humidity, I think we're going to skip the hot fish. I agree with skipping the hot fish. They also have a sausage dish. Or if you are a chocolate fan, they do have a very nice uh, lava cake. Ireland also has a Guinness and Bailey's Shake, which if you are into boozy ice creams is very good. I'm not really one that's into boozy ice creams that much, and I usually recommend drinking beers and wines at the festival just because they're more bang for your buck. But right. You can't make a, a weak beer or wine. No, but you can make a weak cocktail. For However, sure. For people who don't want to taste the alcohol or want a boozy dessert, that's a good choice. Next up for us is Apple Seed Orchard, which is indoors, and that is fortuitous SAT word of the day there because it is so hot outside ew David what are we what I'm Alan ew Alan ew humidity oh I get it I get it because they're they're from Canada yeah they're Canadian nice together. won't you join me and a little jaunt at the place known as the place I currently am during festival season, they do not run Canada far and wide. They turn it into an air-conditioned booth called Appleseed Orchard, which we're here for. Mostly just drinks, though, which I think we're also here for. Okay, so moving from right to left, we have the Big Storm Brewing Company Apple Blonde Ale. We have next up the Playa, Lin Playa Linda? Yeah, Playa Linda. Brewing Caramel Apple Pie Ale. And then the Three Daughters Brewing Apple Pecan Brown Ale. Unsurprising, all the beers are apple infused. They also have a cider flight. Additionally, they have a non alcoholic frozen apple drink, which you could also make alcoholic, and they have an apple crumbled tart if you would like a dessert. What are you going for? Blonde ale. The blonde ale. The blonde ale. Obviously. Apple, apple beer cheers? Apple beer cheers. Take oh, wow. Oh, yeah. You like the blonde ale? I do. Apple is one of my favorite flute flutes. It's a favorite flute? Yeah, it's hot. Apple is one of my favorite fruits, but oftentimes apple flavored things are too sweet and they just taste like apple juice. Yeah. That is not the case here. This is a really nice crisp beer, but it just has a hint of apple. I could definitely drink a whole one of these. And the Playa Linda Caramel, uh, it has a lot of great apple flavor, but it has some of the spices that you would traditionally find in maybe a pumpkin ale. Mm. So there's a little bit of nutmeg in here, some allspice word. and some cinnamon. Pumpkin. Do you want to try it? Yeah, I'll try that. And then here's the apple pecan or pecan? Pecan. Pecan. <coughs> pecan. Okay, anyway. Butter pecan ice cream pecan pie. No. Oh. Right? Yeah, that's fall in a cup. Sure. So the brown ale, uh, for those of you who don't like darker beers, I think this would be a good introduction for you. It is 
it is light while still maintaining a lot of the caramel notes that you would yeah. want to find in a brown ale. Mm -hmm. I think that comes from the apple, which does shine through. I don't get a lot of pecan, if I'm honest. No. But it is caramelly, and that's what you'd want in a brown ale, but it's still not as heavy as, it, as most are. Rank them. Rank them, okay. You go first. Blonde ale, caramel ale, brown ale. Okay, okay. Mine is caramel ale, blonde ale, and then brown. Next up on the docket is Canada, though it is a hundred degrees outside, so only a maniac would be eating any of the soup. Okay, we got the soup. Cheese. Right, how foolish of me. Cheese. To be clear, we have finished the cheese crawl. Mm -hmm. This is just bonus cheese. Oh! Bonus cheese. Yeah, everyone loves bonus cheese. And yes, it is one million degrees outside, but I couldn't not get the famous cheddar cheese soup from Le Cellier, plus a pretzel roll. It's a must. It's a best of the fest every year. You can also get a little piece of their signature filet with the mushrooms, which I also recommend. But again, we're on a budget today. I only have $3 left on my gift card, so not much uh, left to eat, but I had to get soup. The next spot is Refreshment Port, which is where you can get a variety of poutine. They have a traditional poutine. They also have a braised beef poutine. They had the braised beef poutine last year, and I was so excited about it because it's fries, a cheese sauce made with borson cheese and cheese curds, and it was very underwhelming and sad and made me really upset. So we're gonna skip this one this year, uh, but maybe if we have funding left over, we'll come see if it's redeemed itself or perhaps try the maple cheesecake. But I think we're gonna get cheesecake as our cheese prize. They also have a soft serve apple cinnamon waffle cone, which sounds delicious. So we may be back here, but we are running low on funds and have a few more things we really want to try. Right, moving on. Good day, mates. We're at Australia. What a, what a stellar accent. Thank anyone from Australia for that accent. Anyway, this is one of my favorite desserts. It's a yellow cake. It's rolled in chocolate and coconut. I'm very excited to get it. I do have some bad news for you. They do have pesto on the menu, and I'm, I'm worried about cross-contamination. Are you ruining my cake dreams? I don't want to say it's on me. Okay, it's on me. I'm sorry. Both Australia and Earth Eats have pine nuts on their menu, and I am overly cautious when it comes to my food allergy. But if you do have a food allergy and you would like to eat something at one of the booths that has something that you're allergic to on the menu, I do recommend that you talk with the chefs at those booths. They are more than willing to accommodate you and get you a menu that shows the exact listing of ingredients on every dish. It may take a while, so be patient because the cast members are there to assist you. But if you're me, I'm just probably overly cautious and uh, tend to avoid those booths in general. A quick note on Earth Eats, this is the plant-based booth that's hosted by Impossible Meats. The meatballs that Alan can't eat actually look pretty good. That's the new item this year, so I may have to try those at a later date. Uh, and then the slider they had last year, it's pretty good. I like the wasabi cream sauce. I'm just personally not a huge fan of Impossible Burgers. I think it's a texture thing, but if you are a plant-based eater, this is a good spot for you to come. The next booth is called Shimmering Sips. This is the mimosa booth, essentially. We aren't gonna buy anything here. This is also where you redeem the Emile's Fromage Montage, so we'll see what kind of prize we get. A lot of people really like the mimosas here. They like the mimosa flight. I am not people, because as much as I love a mimosa, these are not the ratio of juice to champagne that I am uh, all about. Call me old fashioned, but when I have a mimosa, I like it to be like 98% champagne. Yeah. Just a little eyedropper's worth. A pipette. A butterfly's wing flap. A unicorn's eyelash. Amount of juice. And if you look at the color of the mimosas coming out of here. It's not bad. No, they're mostly juice. You may know I don't like sweet drinks. So again, for me, if I'm going to order drinks at the Food and Wine Festival or drinks at Epcot, I usually stick with wine or beer because you get more bang for your buck. Yeah. But we are going to get our free cheesecake. Yeah. Well, I don't even know if it's cheesecake. I just keep assuming it's cheesecake. Oh, it cheesecake. could be something else. Cheesy. I don't know. So what were we gifted with? Okay, I was partly right. It does have cheesecake, but it's mostly strawberry cheesecake soft serve. And then it's garnished again with a little cheesecake. And it's got this cute cup with cheese on it. And I have been rewarded for eating cheese. And that is 
something that means a lot to me. I did hear a congratulations for that, Thank so. You. Well done. It's quite an honor. Well done. Go Club Go. All right, let's, let's dive into the cheese. I'm excited that we didn't get the apple cinnamon sauce served now because this looks better. Let's try it. Cheers. Mm. Okay. Huh. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's worth every bit of the cheese trail. The strawberry is really good. Normally, it's strawberry soft serve. It's not strawberry Dole Whip. And it doesn't have a ton of that artificial flavor that some strawberry does. And it's not... A lot of times the mistake with cheesecake ice cream is that they taste more like custard. Or like sour milk. Right. This is just just the right amount of sweet. And tang. For this incredibly mm. toasty day today. 100% worth it, right? Yeah, and I'm going to go look. This is probably the best prize I've ever gotten. Um, they do Dole Whip for one of the prizes, which is good too. But as a strawberry fan, I'm loving this. And this cute little cup. And again, if you do the cheese crawl, you don't have to do it all in one day. And you don't have to get five different things. You can get five of all the same thing. And I was going to order those items anyway. And I actually ordered more than I needed to anyway. I love the crawl. That's but so good. No crawl means as much to me as the cheese as crawl. The cheese crawl. <laughs> Brew, wing, get it? Like, like beers and wings. <laughs> get it? Yep. Brewing uh, has exactly that. Beers and wings. It is in the air conditioning because it's inside the Odyssey Pavilion here. I don't know that we have enough for beer, but we definitely have enough for wings, I think. I have $3 left. Who knows how much you have? Wings are seven fifty. so fingers crossed. What is your go-to wing flavor? I am a hot wing kind of guy, so I think like the jerk wing, a really, really good jerk wing is something that I go to all the time. Yeah, I like a jerk. I like a mango habanero. But I think that, I think we have to try this. Yeah, I was really worried that that's what you were going to point out, but I also know that I'm intrigued. Curiosity has the best of me. We got to try peanut butter and jelly wings. All right, let's do it. Here are our wings. So seven fifty. I mean, you get like what five wings or so? Not a bad deal. Uh, last year, I kind of felt like, why get wings? at Epcot when you can get wings at like many a chain restaurant, but I'm excited to try peanut butter and jelly. Plus it's air conditioned in here, so that's nice. Um, and I do have good news. We have $11 left over, which means I'm gonna go get a beer flight. Okay. Alrighty. To complete the ensemble. Oh, and moist towelettes. Oh, we love a moist towelette. So this is the Brewing Beer Flight. There's a cider flight too. Uh, this has got a Pineapple Vibes Blonde Ale made by a local Orlando brewing company. A $3 watermelon wheat ale. I bet I enjoy that quite a bit. And a Blood Orange IPA. So all fruit beers. I'm sure they are made from fruits that are pampered as if they were their own newborn babies. But with this, that leaves us a dollar fifty. Yeah. So we did well. Go budget squad. Peanut butter jelly wings. Do you want a flat or a drum? I'm more of a flats kind of lady. Oh, I guess I'll go with the drum. Get the full experience. Oh, that's sticky. This is sticky. Now, I had peanut butter jelly wings at Steakhouse 71. They weren't my favorite because they were too dry. I don't think that's going to be a problem. It tastes like peanut butter. Here's the deal. If you like peanut butter, wow. this is for you. I will say, I mean, the wing is okay. Like, the wing is average. The sauce, though, if you have problems with textures of food, this might not be your jam, but I think it's pretty tasty. It's a pretty good wing, nice and moist. There's a lot of sauce on there, so don't have to worry about it being too dry. I will say, this is definitely the most adventurous flavor up there, but ultimately, it's wings at Food and Wine Festival. For me, there's things I'd be more interested in trying, more unique things that I can't get out of Buffalo Wild Wings down the street. But if you like wings, they're not bad, and you could just sit in the air conditioning and eat them, so. Last thing I'll add about the wings, I do think they could be a, an inexpensive meal for someone if you were looking for less of like a snacky around the world type thing and you wanted an actual meal. You get like five or six wings for seven fifty. That's not bad for Disney prices. Also though, you can't really taste the jelly at all. It's mostly, all peanut butter. It's mostly a textural thing, really. All right, so I'm trying the pineapple blonde. And I'm trying our IPA. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, we did it on budget. That's not a double, double cheers. Double, double cheers, cheers. Double to cheers. budgets. To budgets. That you gave us. Wow, that's good. That's pretty good, too. There's not a strong pineapple flavor. I was worried about that because while I love a blonde ale, I don't love pineapple. Um, but it mostly just tastes like a blonde ale, slightly sweeter. So this is meant to be a blood orange IPA? 
And for those of you who are big IPA drinkers, the one thing that you'll notice about them is that there is a hoppiness and then it is always citrusy. And for me, it's difficult to delineate if it is citrus from the blood orange or citrus from the hops themselves. So it's good, I just don't taste blood orange. Ooh, that's lovely. I struggled getting this one out of the container, but that's the watermelon wheat. That one has the strongest fruit flavor that I've tried, um, and it's nice and light and refreshing, oh, yeah. and the watermelon cuts the heaviness of the wheat beer. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite of the three. That's really good. Wow. Yeah. So for me, it goes, ooh, that IPA is pretty good. So I'll go. It goes IPA, watermelon, blonde ale. That watermelon, though, is in, like within maybe half a point of the IPA. Watermelon wins for me, for sure, and then I would say Blondale second, IPA third, only because I could see myself drinking more of the Blondale on a hot day. As we finish these beers, I think it's time for Molly and Allen's Best of the Fest. I will go first. My Best of the Fest includes the corned beef from Flavors of Fire, the tostada from Mexico, the coffee-coated beef from Kenya, the griddled cheese from Greece, the cheese bread from Brazil, and my favorite beer flight was the one here at Brew Wing. Plus, a special shout out to my longtime, many, many years running festival classics, the noodle grind from Germany and the cheddar cheese soup in Canada. Basically, if it had cheese, it made my list. Mine are the corned beef from Flavors of Fire, the spicy salmon donburi from Japan, the griddled cheese from Greece, the apple beer flight from the Apple Seed Orchard, and my runaway favorite, surprising to me the most, is uh, the pork shoulder lettuce wrap from Swanky Saucy Swine. Okay, but what's the one thing that we had that you would not get again your worst of the fest? Oh, easy. The dumplings from China. Mm -hmm. I know you. I would say, shocking to everyone, the rock cut cheese we had from the Alps. It was doing too much. Stick with the classics there. And before we leave you, we're going to share some of our top pro tips for coming to the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. Get here early and try to avoid weekends because the locals come out at nights and on weekends. Make a plan. There's a lot of delicious things to eat here. A lot of you are on a budget like we were today, so look at the menus in advance and figure out what you want to eat. Beer Flights is the way to go because you can try a lot of different beers at one time. And also, pro tip, stick with beers and wine at the actual booths themselves rather than getting a mixed drink because you can make a mixed drink week, but you can't make beer and wine week. And on that same note, if you want a full-size drink, you're better off sticking to the permanent places inside the pavilions than getting things at the kiosks. And lastly, don't forget to look at the Beacon of Magic at Spaceship Earth. It's beautiful all the time, but they've been lighting it up with special sequences for every festival, and this time it's Be Our Guest, so don't miss that as you're leaving the festival. That wrapped up a very successful food and wine venture. We went to 19 booths with our $75 per person budget. There are more booths to come. We've got Hawaii mac and cheese noodles, so we can do a part two if you're interested. So in the meantime, make sure to like and subscribe to the video, join the club, and it's been a real pleasure. Bye. It's been magical and delicious. It has been delicious. Let's write Cosmic Rewind. Right now? Yeah. Okay.